If you could have a coach help you identify and focus on what's important, would that accelerate your success? If you answered yes, then this podcast is for you. Each week, my guests, professional coaches, will share one actionable piece of advice to help you level up wherever you need it most. My name is Chris Ippolito, and welcome to the Get Coached Podcast. Okay. Okay. Let's let's get into it. Yeah. Let's. So, so I wonder when you first went through the Myers scan, what, what did you? What were your thoughts about the way that it, it appears? That it appears. Um, I guess it was kind of like it almost was simpler than I expected it to be, because it was. It's really just rearranging things in order of um, yeah. of I guess like value or importance. Uh, and like what's considered good, what's, what's bad kind of thing. And I was like, and it was funny because as I was doing it, I was like, well, these all are just kind of like, there's like a logical order to them all. So I was like, anybody who doesn't put it in the same order as me, I actually thought this, I was like, is wrong. <laughs> so, so was, obviously that's not the case because everybody's interpretation would be different, but I almost looked at them like there's a logical order that they should have gone in. Mm. well that, that, that's fantastic because there's value just in that alone isn't there right yeah just, for sure like my first thought was that anyone else doing this would be wrong <laughs> yeah it's absolutely well the, the, the guy that designed this uh, dr hartman uh, way back when uh, he, he thought that it should be a way of us defining mathematically what good is what how we value things right so he, he did a lot of work in something called formal axiology to put this together and really said that this same way that there's three primary colors, there's three primary ways of thinking. Right? The relator, the doer, the, do the thinker, or say it mathematically, intrinsic, extrinsic, and systemic. And from that, there's two different worlds that we think in. So that, that's where it comes from. And, and that's why it's not, it's not a personality assessment based on a subsection of the population. They're massively valuable tools, but this is how you're thinking. It's like a, an MRI of your mind at that moment in time. So yeah, it's fascinating and there's, very many different distinctions that come out of it in terms of uh, the output. No, no two outputs are the same. I've done hundreds of these things. So there's, right. there's lots of stuff there. So I'm, I'm going to share my screen with you. Perfect. I'll show you your, uh, I'll show you your full report here, Chris. Yeah. Cause when, so the way this process works is I went through to the free assessment through your link, um, which then you get my results and then uh, nor the, there's a request that if you want to review the more in depth, then then you book um, a call like this with the the coach that submitted that link to you, right? That's kind of the normal process. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and so either way around, you, you're going to get output from it, which is which is valuable just to start to get some of that awareness. But cool, you, the report that comes up is like 20 plus pages. You can see yours is 21. You know? So there's <laughs> There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in there, and I I purposely didn't look at this before our uh, our, our time today. Yeah, because it's, it's always much more fun that way. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> surprise effect. I like it. Like a like a kid kid at Christmas looking at these things. So yeah. But before before we dive in, I wonder, you know, especially now we just died 2020. It's a good time to think about this stuff and about what your aspirations, goals, outcomes are for the uh, for the year. What what mm. would if you could wave a magic wand, say, what what would the end of 2020 look like for you? Well, oh, geez, that's a really good question. And I have definitely been thinking about this for a while. So end of 2020 would look something like this. So the podcast will have been a full year old. Yeah. Um, we would have a, I would have had recorded then like 50 to 52 episodes. Ideally, I'm shooting for 52. Uh, yeah. So by the end of the first year, I'm hoping to have built a, an audience with it uh, while adding value to the guests. So part of, of the, it's kind of all part of a big picture. So I'm, I do freelance uh, funnel work uh, to help business coaches generate a more consistent flow of leads and business. 
So through the podcast of adding value to the guests, perhaps I start working with some of them or they introduce me to coaches who are looking for it. So that side of the business is, is at a point where it's stable and it's creating enough income for my household and my family. Um, the podcast is, is growing in, in followings and, and subscriber base and, and numbers. I, as far as what that looks like, I honestly would be thrilled if I were to reach a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. And then as far as paying clients on the funnel side of it, if I was, um, uh, my goal is, is, uh, around, uh, 6,000 to 7,000 a month in, in revenue, like positive revenue where that's like, that's income for me, for my family, um, and then by the end of the year, I've also have launched a side product that I'm, I'm currently working on, but the podcasts and the funnel work are kind of my, my core focus right now. Awesome. Uh, you know, it just, just without anything else, it's so nice to hear a concise <laughs> yeah. review of, of, of goals for the year. And like, there's so much depth to, to goal setting. There can be, there can be this this huge approach to it in many different areas themselves. But just to know that what's top of your mind is important because clarity is power. And that first yeah. thing is that's awesome. Yeah. That's I've right. got other things that are important to me, like my health and, and sure. my family and all that. But I feel, um, the, so one book that really has impacted me a lot is The One Thing. And, and yeah. the question in there that they ask, the one thing question is, I have it written up on my whiteboard here. So what's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will be easier and necessary. And for me, it's, it's currently building a, a business and assets that allows me to stay full-time at home and be a full-time dad and husband. That's, that's what I've decided on. And that's why my focus is so much on that. Yeah. Yeah. No. And so let's explain that bit again, because that's important. That's, that's some of the juice right there. So like, let's fast forward to this time next year, just the start of 2021. Uh, when you know that you've got at least a thousand subscribers, you've got 52 episodes in, in, you've got that consistent revenue coming in, that income, you're being able to be that person. Yeah. How's it feel for you? How's it feel? Um, there would be a great sense of accomplishment because it will have been, the first time of, of really going out there and building something of my own from scratch, uh, there would be a enormous sense of gratitude for everybody who was a part of that journey. So each and every guest, obviously, um, each and every subscriber who subscribes to the podcast, uh, my wife for supporting me um, and, and believing in, in this this dream of mine to actually like create a business so that I don't have to go and work for somebody else 40 hours a week, as well as allowing her the freedom to be able to stay at home and, and not have to go to work either so that we can be full-time husband and wife and then full-time parents to our, our, our child, our newborn child. Right. So yeah. And then my son Austin would be a year old just over oh, a year. Wow. <laughs> so he'll be walking around and probably doing some other crazy stuff, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be exciting for sure. And what do you see the biggest blocks or barriers to doing that? Myself, 100%. My mindset, this strange fear of, of failure though. It, it really, it, it's funny because I'm in this position of having worked with enough coaches, just conversationally read enough books that I know it's a, it's a false sense of fear. Like it's, there's really no, there's no rationale behind it. Like what's the worst that could happen? Oh, I go to another, I go to a job. That's probably the worst thing that could happen. Uh, actually there's more worse things that could happen, but like for me, the fear of failure is, is, the fear of having to go back to spending 40 hours a week from my wife and my kid. Well, is that really the end of the world if this doesn't end up working out? No, it's not. Right. So it's it to me, like there is these worst case scenarios or worst case scenarios anyways are yeah. really not that bad. So I just have to remember that it's like, just set that fear aside 
uh, stop self-sabotaging uh, because that's definitely something that's occurring and still does on a daily basis. But um, yeah, those, I would say those, that's the main thing that's getting in my way is, is myself in, in just a general sense. Yeah. Well, yeah. And if you, I guess you could strap like that out a little bit. And if, if that fear keeps popping up for you, right. And this, and you're, you're in your, you're in your own way and you don't get to where you want to be. Like think about what, how's that, how's that going to feel for the people in your life? Yeah. Yeah. And that's my biggest motivation is my son because it's, yeah. he, though he's not going to be old enough to really remember this, these moments of his life. Yeah. there there still could be a lasting impact on him i don't know right so for me it's it's really a, a case of lead by example be be the man that i want my son to ultimately become which is somebody who doesn't give up who doesn't back down because of a sense of fear uh, who pushes through who goes and creates something of his own so whether that's the way i was like the, the thing is that's not the way I was in the past. There was a lot of fear and, and a lot of motive, things were decided by fear in a lot of cases, but I don't want that for my son because of the impacts that it's, it's had on my life. So it's kind of now I have to rebuild myself to be the man that I want my son to ultimately become kind of thing or to become the father that I want to be for him. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's powerful stuff. And I, and I wonder how, how much harder does it feel if you don't follow through this year, if we're in the same position next year mm. and the fears are popping up now, what's that ultimately going to impact down the road? Yeah, it's, I, I don't know, I guess. That's, it's something that it's, I, I guess I look at it like there's, Though there's that possibility, I'm also trying to take the mindset of like, there's no, this is your opportunity to do it. The stars have aligned in, there's really never going to be a better time for me to be able to do this. So I can't allow myself to fail. Yeah. Which again is, it's so, it's, it's so interesting, like the words that we use, because I'm saying like, <laughs> I don't want to fail, but at the same time, there's like this, I got to remember that there should be no fear of failure. Exactly. It's, it's, uh, it's infinitely fascinating because it's like, well, if we, if we focus on what we don't want, then ultimately the best we get is to feel good about what we don't want. It's just right. I'm okay with the failure. Yeah. Uh, Rather than, well, actually, what I do want is to have a successful podcast. <laughs> and I want all those yeah. things. Yeah, podcasts and business, yeah. Podcasts and business, for sure, for sure. So, so let, let's get into it. So I, I, I stopped the shared screen so we could kind of cover like, some of the stuff. But Perfect. Here, here it is, Chris. Dry, drum roll. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> like this. <laughs> and I'll share this with you afterwards, so I don't need to go over the detail. But to, just to kind of go over what the actual mind scan looks like as a table. Okay. So this is a sample. This isn't yours just yet. But I mentioned already that there's, there's the three different dimensions. So there's the relator, the doer, and, and the thinker. And, okay. and, so, and, and those are across two different worlds. So we have the external world up top here. And yeah. Can you see that if I'm drawing on it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then to the internal world down here. And so three different dimensions over two different worlds gives us six different areas to look at. That makes sense so far. Mm -hmm. And and so those those six different areas, mind scan measures in two different ways. It measures on attentiveness. So the scale from plus ten to minus ten is how attentive you are in a particular area. Okay. And then the size uh, of the circle uh, is how clear you are in a certain area. So the, oh, okay, I see that at the bottom, the clarity scale. The, the clarity scale. In, in okay. The, so let me go back to this. And so let me show you uh, your mind scan. So here we go. And so, uh, yeah, here's, here's your mind scan overall, Chris. You can see the different areas. And what jumps out straight away uh, is, is your... <laughs> <laughs> the practical <laughs> thinking. A couple of things, a couple of things. Yeah, I mean, first of all, you've got uh, outstanding clarity in your practical thinking. But we'll come back to that in a second. But the first things first really is uh, your... 
your empathy and, and the attentiveness you have to this area. And uh, uh, empathy is about how you feel about people, of course, right? It's, right. it's, it's your, your, your need uh, to, to put people first. Right? And that's kind of evident in what you just shared, right? The reason why you want this stuff is to have that family life you thought about. Mm. Your son, Austin, to be able to be the man that you want him to be and to you to give that to him from being that yourself. And so that's, that's obvious. And, and the way it perhaps shows up in how you described it, knowing that you want to do it through helping people, putting other people first, creating value for others. And so that, that's, that's, that's one way that that shows up for you based on, uh, based on this, mm-hmm. uh, the biasness or the attentiveness you have in the area. Because that's something that obviously you're clearly most attentive to to the external world. Right. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, yeah. And, and you also have excellent clarity here, which means you could see many ways of, uh, of helping people, right? You know mm-hmm. how people think, and it almost allows you to know what people are going to think before they do it, right? You have a lot of instinct around that you can trust. And the, the softer side uh, sometimes of having an attentiveness this high uh, in the uh, empathy world, excuse me, the external world to the people, which is empathy, is that sometimes you can be overly trusting hmm. in your <laughs> to put people above yourself. Yeah, yeah. Does that show up for you? Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll share a little bit about that. So the reason why my wife and I balance each other out so well is I, I am usually very quick to trust, whereas she's a lot more, not that she's untrusting, but she's a lot more skeptical up front. Where she's like, okay, let's let's pump the brakes a little bit on on whatever it is that we're exploring, and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. This totally seems legit. Or I I just throw trust in there because I've always taken the approach of I'll give you trust until you've given me a reason to not trust you, and and I've been burnt probably quite a few times on that, but I, I just that's my default, I suppose. That's just the way I. I've been for my entire life. <laughs> and there's a lot of value there, right? Because it allows yeah. you to, to give that to people. And because of it, you get a lot of connection with people. And so when things are good for you, uh, when, when you feel connected to people. And mm. so when you put people around you, you feel connected, you feel like there's a, uh, where everyone's having a good time. And that, so that for the people side of you is, is, really, uh, is really that place. And then what's interesting is how these, these kind of two fit together is that perhaps, and I'd like to hear your distinction here as well, is that you've got um, massive clarity here, which means you can see so many ways in practical thinking. So practical thinking is about taking action. Right? So the doer to the external world is what we're looking at here. And so we've got, you know, this is the doer and this is to the external world and the outside here. You can see many ways of getting stuff done. And so. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's fantastic and you're fairly well balanced here but you're erring on the side of um n- of not doing things <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah so, so if we're further down the 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 uh negative bias or the disregard to the practical thinking it tend tends to tend to show up as well i can see many especially with the clarity you have many ways of doing it but I probably see what could go wrong before I can see what could go right. Right. Or at least I make those assumptions of what could go wrong. Uh, yeah, that one's interesting too, because so um, there is, there's two positions that I took outside of the world of personal finance. And both of them were with IT services companies where I was doing business development and being a smaller company they were very open to ideas as far as like, what are some of, if you've got a better way that we could potentially do this, please share. And I submitted a ton of ideas because for me, I was like, oh, I see, I see this, I see that. And as I started learning more about marketing and and sales techniques and, or just that in general, I would bring more and more to the table as far as like, hey, why don't we do this? Why don't we do this? And what was, what became very frustrating and part of the reason why I, in both cases, we ended up parting ways was they would get to a point where they were like, well, we don't agree with that. And we, we want to stick with this methodology. And I was like, but 
that's an old way of doing it. Here's a newer and perhaps better way or more efficient. So I, I, I was able to uh, kind of like connect the dots on, on different ways to solve a problem. Uh, but then I would also agree with the fact that on the, like the doing side of it. So when it comes to executing on, especially if it involves just me, myself, I, I struggle with that and, and, and still do as we kind of talked a little bit before we started recording yeah. is, is I see the ways of doing it, but then I don't always finish it. I'll start and and i've and that was also been a, a bad habit of mine starting a lot of things but never finishing all of them and that's again something i'm working on currently 2020 the podcast is really one of those things that i'm using as almost a, a tool to develop those proper habits because i've made a commitment right i've made commitments to all the guests and when i'm launching and and i, I have to do it so because I've, I've just committed to too many people of like, hey, this is what I'm doing. And they're like, great, can't wait to see it. And you're like, oh, shoot, now I actually have to do it. <laughs> so that's fantastic leverage for you to do that to yourself. You yeah. could. Because you know that you value connection so much that if you commit to someone, you don't want to let them down. Right. So you, it's great leverage to give that to yourself. And, and just to remember that th these are all levers, right? These are all levers because the, the thing that I like most about mine's kind of one of the things I guess is that it just reminds us that we have choice because right. all of these things that we are, we just choose to be. And mine's kind of just gives you a way of having that awareness so you can start to use that choice. And we, we have tons of different ways and tools of doing that. But, and you can also see how that would show up in that last company that you were with, with as well. Because you come up with all these different ideas because you can see lots of different ways of doing it. And they're telling you that they don't like your ideas. That's going to break the connection they have with you. Right. right. Yeah. right. And, and the last one to the uh, external world is the structured thinking. It's about black and white processes and procedures. And you're fairly mm. balanced in this, um, moderately down on the disregard side. But again, a good, good understanding of how you can put things together. And so again, if you want to pull the lever, that's going to be powerful. But I want to jump to the internal world because this is what's really interesting. This is really under the surface, like under the, uh, uh, the, the iceberg that's under, under the waterline, of course. And mm. this is where you talked about before that fear. This is where that's going to show up a lot for you. And a lot of mind scans that I've seen show up in this way because it's, it's the way that we have our internal self-talk, the way that we have our beliefs that we're not really sure what they are. Yeah. Really shape and control the quality of our lives. And getting an understanding of what they, they are is, is really powerful. Right. The first things first, really, Chris, is this self-direction. Right? This is about... Yeah. I, I, I jumped ahead and I read that. So sorry, I shouldn't have. I was like, oh, geez, there it is. <laughs> Well, I think one of the first things you said to me was this word down here, perfectionism. Yeah. And yeah, so someone with uh, a, a high degree of um, attentiveness to, to self-direction is that yeah, it's, it's my way or the highway. I know where I want to go uh, and I'm really pushing towards it. And the other thing to, and now obviously that's great because that's going to give you focus. And you, you'll notice as well that, you, that your, your circle here is on the smaller side. So, so the clarity isn't as, as large, like an aperture on a camera. Mm. Also, the great side of that is that it means you've got more focus. You know what you don't, and that's why you're able to articulate really well to me what you want to be doing, what's the most important things for 2020, because you've got that focus. And you know, and you're, 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 you know you're going to get it, right? That's, that's it. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's a fantastic tool for you once you're dialed in. And obviously the softer side of that is just to remind yourself, well, maybe, maybe I need to check in with someone else or check in with myself if it's yeah. really what I want because I know I'm laser focused right now. Yeah. And, and these two often are, um, have some correlation here. Like, so, so role awareness is what you're doing right now. Like how, how good do you feel about where you are right now? And, and you, and so where you are moving into uh, developing something really new for 2020 and I guess making transition of, from your former life, it, it shows right now that you're, you're in that place, right? So you're, you're, 
usually what I see here, if we do a lot of work with teams, and if we're looking at a mind scan from someone that's in your team, and we see that um, we're down here at minus 10 in this kind of area uh, for, for role awareness, it's like that's the biggest red flag that comes up. Because if that's someone in your team and they're down there, they're, they're going to quit. Yeah. <laughs> they're about to be out the door. That's yeah. a really powerful tool for, for leaders to, to know that. And because for where you are, right, it makes sense because you're somewhat in a transition period to move in and getting clear about being really comfortable with what you do. Yeah. My, my expectation is that as you start to get into this, this self-direction is going to pull down a little bit. You're going to be more open to different distinctions. And look, you, you, I don't know you that well already, but I can tell that you're a coachable guy. Um, and you're, you're only in this position because you believe in the value of it anyway. Yeah. So which, which shows that you'll be open to that overall because, because you'll be doing that by connecting with people because that's right. what you like. And, right. and then what will happen is this will tend to go up and this will come, tend to come down and bounce. Right. And, Cause, because I'll have more clarity on what my role is while my focus on on like my way or the highway kind of like i said at the beginning when i ordered things i was like if you put them in any different order you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> so obviously yeah. that showed up um but you're saying that as i gain more awareness of my role then the self direction will start shifting down a little bit cuz now i'll i'll kind of open up again to other directions and other paths that i could take is that what you were saying? Okay. Absolutely, yeah. And, and that, that could show up some of that fear as well. Because right now, it's look, I've got a path. I know what I want to do. I don't want to take a look anywhere apart from that path because it's so important I execute on this. Yeah. Because it, it means impact for my family. It means make, making sure that I, I develop my son into who I, the man I want him to be. Yeah. So I can't afford to be open right now for this. I'm focused. Yeah. It's really interesting because I, like a lot of other entrepreneurs would say, I suffer from shiny object syndrome normally, but I have over the last few months, I've had to say no to a lot more things that normally in the past I would have been like, yeah, sure, let's try it out for a little bit. And then my attention would have just been so spread thin that I wouldn't be really putting enough energy behind any single thing. And again, through a lot of the books that I've read and, and guidance from some coaches is just, you know, just focus on one thing and, and stick with it for a more extended period of time and see what happens. Cause I've, I've been very guilty of not doing that. So that could be part of the reason also why that self-direction is so high is that I'm just in this mode of, stop distracting me with all these shiny objects because I'm very self-aware of that, that I have that tendency to want to tinker and play around with multiple different things. Um, but the one and like the one thing right now is the podcast and, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's endlessly fascinating. And the last place that, that really is going to put a backstop to this for you, Chris, is this, this self-empathy, right? Because we've already made the distinction that for you, the connection with others is important. Right. And that, that's a focus for you a lot of the time. It's good when you have that connection and you can see many ways of doing that, right? You know how people think you're a people person. And, and the opposite of that is how you think of yourself, of course, right? The mm -hmm. internal version of that is what self-care are you giving yourself? And where you are right now is all about, okay, well, you've got a newborn son. You've got a wife to, to, to love and look after in some respects. And you've got business to, to focus on and deliver. Right now, they're your priorities. That's clear. And so your self-care, the, the, the way that you think about yourself could suffer. Mm. And, and we often see this. Uh, self empathy down here for people that are successful. Really, because if you down at this point here, it tends to be like, no, you're not, you're not good enough, and, be, and beating yourself up, hmm. judgment on yourself. Ah, and people that are successful often use that pain, use that pain to drive them forward and take action. And so these two things often get correlated as well. If this is down here, 
and then this action tends to be up here or can be. Beat myself up, beat myself up. Okay, I've got to take more action, I've got to take more action, I've got to get more results. And then when I get more results, then uh, I'll feel better about myself. Right. Obviously, there's the irony to that is that, you know, depending, the more that you look after yourself, the more at ease you'll be, and then the, you won't have to be fighting yourself, it'll just come for you. So it's something to, to stay aware of that right now, it's not quite clear to you what you need to do to look after yourself. Mm. And, and it might be a, a level you might want to think about. It's kind of like, I remember when I was watching uh, my corporate career uh, very early on and I didn't take a vac vacation for a long time. I remember it was like a badge of honor not to take any holiday. And, and just at certain points, like I need to take it, I'm burnt out. And I was just so young and didn't, didn't know. And, but knowing that you need to take you know, a few days off at least every couple of months yeah. to prevent that burnout. And it's kind of like, this is a little bit of a warning sign for you. That might be something you need to bear in mind. And um, as, as you continue to go forward, right? And so there's, there's a balance of all of these things and in, interplay. We have, we have so many different ways of, of pulling these different levers to make sure that we've set out goals in the right way. But cool mind scan, my friend. It's, uh, it's nice to go through it. And I hope yeah. that's valuable for you. Yeah, that's super interesting. Um, it's so it's fascinating how accurate some of these things can be, and and I, I haven't done a lot of those other ones in a while, like the disc and mm. and all that. But a lot of those tend to be more on personality and and traits and whatnot. But I mean, this is pretty revealing as far as a lot of things. Um, to be honest, the self empathy one makes a lot of sense, especially at the time that I took the the assessment because um it would have been geez it was almost like three years ago where i started oh no it would have been beginning of 2017 yeah so 2017 i started forming two very key habits that i felt were going to be to 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 help me like to take care of me which yeah. were exercising more regularly uh meditation and and journaling uh, I still do the exercising on a fairly regular basis, just not yeah. as much as I'd like to be, but I'm, I'm, stale, I'm still staying consistent with it. But the two habits that I, I absolutely loved doing and took a ton of value out of, but I don't anymore, are the meditation and journaling. I do from, like, they're very infrequent, though. It's like, oh, I should do that, whereas for almost two years solid, it was a daily habit. I did it every single morning. And then the thing that changed was having uh, my son. Not, and it's not, I don't want anybody who, who watches this to think like I'm blaming him, but it, part of it is like, I think it's like my focus shifted. Sure. Right. And, and I looked at it like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm dropping the, such like two really positive habits. Why am I doing this? And I was getting really hard on myself about it. But like looking at the mind scan and, and just through our conversation, yeah. I didn't, I never really kind of thought about it in, in, in a more positive term of it's just that my focus has shifted from me to him and and my wife right mm -hmm. and and that's not a bad thing but i also got to remember like you said i got to still take care of myself because if not then i won't be in my best form to be able to take care of them yeah yeah no, absolutely that was really cool i like that yeah it's amazing how many of uh, these patterns show up with with all of us and, and everyone's got their own specifics but you know the the people that we work with, whether it's individuals, you know, people looking to jump to a different career or people that are looking to take their business to the next level and have big teams to look after. It's about understanding this and seeing the patterns and, and just utilizing the tools over again, because it's just like the principle of, you know, that meditation and journaling, it helps so many people. We know it works, right? It's going to be very, not very, but it can be different for, our, for how it works specifically for you, Chris, versus how it works specifically for me. Right. But, but putting a playbook together with those principles and then design it specifically for the person is just 
infinitely powerful and you just see all these roadblocks kind of melt out the way and like once that's out of the way of course the growth is always exponential and wherever you are so it's just it's always so much fun to go through and it's fascinating and it's just so helpful for people you know? so, yeah yeah it um <laughs> as it does like it it's funny because it can add clarity to other to areas that you were maybe not very clear on right. and and that inner world for me was all three categories my clarity was quite low in comparison to the external world and and that's that's a nice reminder for myself to go back and and it's i ha- it's almost like i have that natural tendency to have more clarity around the external world meaning it takes more effort and it's going to require more energy on my part to increase my clarity on the inner self right so if anything that's telling me I should put more effort on the inner self because the external self is perhaps a strength and it just, it's there and I, I need to fix or not fix, but address the, the inner world side of things. And I, yeah. Great distinction. Cause if you think about it, especially in that empathy, self empathy category, if you have a higher attentiveness for empathy for others, it's beautiful because it means you want to help other people but also puts you in a position where you're sometimes attaching your happiness to other people's reactions, right. other people's feelings. And obviously that's a dangerous game. And so Very if we much so. Yeah. get the balance between that and the internal world, then ultimately you can validate that for yourself and then define what success looks like for yourself rather than have any sort of external validation in it. Obviously, it's easier said than done, but just being aware of it is a great first step. And it yeah. all comes down to choices because you could have a mind scan that looks a certain way. You could have minds, two mind scans that are similar, but you could have two very different people and one could be perfectly happy where they are, another could be completely in a place where they don't want to be. Right. And so that's where the individualism comes down in terms of formulating how to put a, put a plan together and how to formulate the right mindset for getting to where you want to be because it's all, all individual for sure. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Well, that was fun. I really appreciate that, Nick. It was very eye opening. Um, and, and, and I have some, some items to like in my mind of like, okay, I got to get back on this. Cause it was, I was in a much different place. I was feeling great. And I've noticed kind of just more recently with my lack of taking care of myself, that my mind is starting to go down a path that I don't want it to go down. So it's just about course correcting and getting it back on, on the right path. So thank you. I appreciate that. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for listening to the Get Coach podcast. If you're looking for more information, you can head over to our website, which is getcoachedpodcast.com. You'll find the show notes for this and every other episode there. And if getting actionable advice every week from professional coaches is something you want more of, then make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes.